Amazon rainforest deforestation is influencing weather in Tibet. That's the headline of an article at phys.org, published January 5, 2023. The paper points to two articles in the peer-reviewed journal Nature Climate Change. This short video provides an overview of these articles and their findings. In addition, I use information from two related peer-reviewed articles, one each in One Earth and Global Change Biology, from February 17, 2023 and March 7, 2023, respectively. The information from these latter two journals calls into question our ability to respond positively to the dire news reported in Nature Climate Change. First up, an overview of the information about the reported connection between the Amazon rainforest and the weather in Tibet. Bear in mind that the rainforest is more than 15,000 kilometers from Tibet. In the country of my birth, that's more than 9,000 miles, or about three trips from San Francisco to New York City. I have no idea why you'd want to travel from San Francisco to New York City, much less three times. The initial article in Nature Climate Change was written by 13 authors. It's titled, Teleconnections Among Tipping Elements in the Earth's System. From the abstract of this open access paper comes this information. Quote, we find that the Amazon rainforest area exhibits strong correlations with regions such as the Tibetan Plateau and West Antarctic Ice Sheet. Models show that the identified teleconnection propagation path between the Amazon rainforest area and the Tibetan Plateau is robust under climate change. In addition, we detect that Tibetan Plateau's snow cover extent has been losing stability since 2008. We further uncover that various climate extremes between the Amazon rainforest area and the Tibetan Plateau are synchronized under climate change. Our framework highlights that tipping elements can be linked and also the potential predictability of cascading tipping dynamics and the Tibetan Plateau are synchronized under climate change. Our framework highlights that tipping elements can be linked and also the potential predictability of cascading tipping elements." End quote. In other words, and this is no surprise if you've been following my work for more than 20 minutes, so-called tipping points, once crossed, are irreversible. In fact, any one self-reinforcing feedback loop or tipping point is sufficient to make climate change irreversible. I identified a few dozen of these self-reinforcing tipping points in a long essay at GuyMcPherson.com before I stopped keeping track in August 2016. The feedback loops I, ad I identified were, and are, rooted in the peer-reviewed literature. Remember, only one is required to ensure the irreversibility of climate change. Ever late to the evidentiary party, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has finally concluded that a so-called tipping point had been crossed in its IPCC Special Report on the Ocean and Cryosphere and Changing Climate, published September 24, 2019. The second paper in Nature Cl Climate Change merely comments on the first paper, pointing out with considerable excitement that this research had established a long-distance linkage between tipping points. This is hardly new, of course, with well-known examples being reported for many years involving the El Nino Southern Oscillation and the impacts of the warming Arctic Ocean on the entire planet. Manga Bay provides additional perspective on the peer-reviewed open access paper in Nature Climate Change. Specifically, this article published on March 8, 2023, begins with four italicized bullet points and continues to this paragraph. Quote, There's a recent saying grown popular among climate scientists, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. Now, new research adds to our understanding that, likewise, what happens in the Amazon rainforest doesn't stay there. End quote. In other words, the story in Manga Bay begins by highlighting the long-known teleconnection between the Arctic and the rest of the world. It's unclear to me how the writers at Manga Bay understand this well-established connection, yet the writer of the second article at Nature Climate Change, a principal research scientist in mathematics and modeling at the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington, Great Britain, 
somehow remained surprised and excited about the identification of a long-distance climate change teleconnection. I now turn to the open-access peer-reviewed paper at One Earth written by eight scholars. The paper is titled, Many Risky Feedback Loops Amplify the Need for Climate Action. It begins with an abstract that could have been written by a middle school science student. Quote, Many feedback loops significantly increase warming due to greenhouse gas emissions. However, not all of these feedbacks are fully accounted for in climate models. Thus, associated mitigation pathways could fail to sufficiently limit temperatures. A targeted expansion of research and an accelerated reduction of emissions are needed to minimize risks. End quote. Please allow my cynical commentary as I reread each of the four sentences in this abstract and then comment briefly. Sentence one quote, Many feedback loops significantly increase warming due to greenhouse gas emissions. End quote. Duh. Sentence two quote, However, not all of these feedbacks are fully accounted for in climate models. End quote. Of course not. No model is complete. They're models. They're not reality. Sentence three, quote, thus associated mitigation pathways could fail to sufficiently limit temperatures, end quote. Yeah, right, as if we're making a serious effort. Sentence four, quote, a targeted expansion of research and an accelerated reduction of emissions are needed to minimize risks, end quote. Let me know when you're ready to give up an ounce of privilege to make this happen. The authors of this paper, really, let me know when you're ready to give up your salary to live off-grid. Let me know when you're ready to stop long-distance traveling to any of the dozens of events you attend each year. Apparently, reducing carbon emissions is for other people, not for you. The main text of the paper in One Earth begins thusly, quote, As we increasingly understand climate change as a series of disasters in the short term and a major threat in the longer term, Many governmental jurisdictions and world scientists have declared a climate emergency. In addition, nearly all countries have signed on to the Paris Accord, which calls for limiting warming to 2 degrees C and ideally 1.5 degrees C. I'm not a climate scientist. I've never claimed to be a climate scientist. But I know that we passed the 2C Rubicon years ago. Consider this line from page 31 of Andrew Y. Glickson's October 8, 2020 book, The Event Horizon. Quote, During the Anthropocene, greenhouse gas forcing has ridden, risen by more than 2.0 watts per meter squared, equivalent to more than 2 degrees C above pre-industrial temperatures, which constitutes an abrupt event over a period not much longer than a lifetime. End quote. The eight authors of the peer-reviewed paper published by One Earth don't know that two degrees is in their rearview mirror. They don't even know that 1.5 degrees is behind us. Neither do the peer reviewers or the editor. How could this be? It gets worse, of course. From a popular article at Earth.com, published March 10th, 2023, entitled Dangerous Climate Feedback Loops Have Been Underestimated, we learn this. Quote, current climate models may underestimate some of the effects of global warming because they fail to take full account of the role of amplifying feedback loops. End quote. One of the leaders of the study said of the 27 amplifying feedback loops they considered in their research, quote, this is the most extensive list available of climate feedback loops, and not all of them are fully considered in climate models. End quote. A quick look at my blog shows 68 self-reinforcing feedback loops, not 27. And again, I stopped counting in August 2016, more than six and a half years ago. And again, it only takes one of these so-called tipping points to demonstrate that climate change is irreversible. It gets much worse, of course. Consider a paper in the peer-reviewed Global Change Biology written by five scholars and published March 7, 2023, titled Protected Areas Not Likely to Serve as Stepping Stones for Species Undergoing Climate-Induced Range Shifts, the paper demonstrates that, as the title indicates, 
Protected areas are not likely to serve as stepping stones for species undergoing climate-induced range shifts. In fact, the paper concludes, quote, that over half of protected land area and two-thirds of the number of protected units across the globe are at risk of climate connectivity failure, casting doubt on whether many species can successfully undergo climate-induced range shifts among protected areas. Consequently, protected areas are unlikely to serve as stepping stones for a large number of species under a warming climate. End quote. To summarize, then. First, Amazon rainforest deforestation is influencing weather in Tibet, and this is hardly the only example of the few remaining butterflies flapping their wings in South America and therefore disrupting the weather in Africa. Second, self-reinforcing feedback loops are occurring, and people who claim to be scholars are surprised. It's certainly not a surprise to me, nor anybody following my work for the last decade or so, nor anybody who reads the drivel put out by the IPCC. Third, areas set aside as reserves are not going to save the non-human species we claim to love. By the way, they are not going to save us, either. Seems Homo sapiens sapiens, the twice-proclaimed wise species by the not-so-swift species doing the naming, cannot live as if there's no tomorrow, and expect a lot of tomorrows. To quote my favorite singer-songwriter, it's a story that's sad, but it's true. <laughs>